this is Shunin Li from MD Anderson. Um, is uh, exciting to be presenting at WCLC this year. Uh, Axon 14 has been a area of active research. This year, we are going to present uh, new data showing ctDNA dynamics and the certain prognostic markers can be used for a TKI-treated metaxon 14 non-small cell lung cancer. The data come from the vision trial. This work uh, really is uh, built on the vision study, which is a single arm uh, trial evaluating topotinib, which is now FDA approved the MET inhibitor in treating metaxon 14 skipping non small cell lung cancer patient when they're in the advanced stage. Um, on this trial, the clinical efficacy has been previously published. This time is the first time we will be talking about the ctDNA dynamics and then some of the biomarkers collected from this trial. Uh, this information is important for us to think forward to understand which patient population may derive benefit uh, versus which patient population may have a shorter duration, so we need to pay extra attention. So the first part of the presentation, we evaluate at the baseline, at the baseline when the patient entered the study, what are the characteristics uh, that could potentially associate it with good or bad clinical outcome? Uh, first of all, we evaluated the MET pathway itself. Uh, we evaluated the baseline HGF and the soluble um, uh, MET and trying to understand if those markers will be able to guide us. Although we saw a trend, but we didn't see a statistical significance in those two markers. In terms of commutation, um, their impact to the clinical outcome, we found that if the metaxon 14 happens with a MET amplification, the tumor respond better to the MET-TKI. As one can imagine, the tumor is very uh, dependent or addicted to the MET pathway. On the other hand, if the MET exon 14 co-occur with another uh, uh, tyrosine kinase uh, pathway, for example, KRAS, BRAF, this tumor tend not to respond because the tumor might be able to engage RAS or RAF uh, to maintain the growth. So at the baseline, I think it's already quite important to understand the commutations uh, and then think about which population of patients potentially can derive the most benefit. The second step we took is to monitor the patient's ctDNA level and then understand if the clearance of ctDNA or not clearance of the ctDNA can potentially associate it with clinical outcome. So here we have three group of patients uh, from this clinical trial. One group is those patients, uh, their tumor never can get ctDNA detected. So those patients, even at the study entry, uh, their blood doesn't show circulating MET exon 14. They do great. Uh, the second group of patients, they enter the study, have MET exon 14 detected in the ctDNA, but over the treatment course, the ctDNA disappear uh, or significantly decrease. Those group of patients, they actually also do very well. As one can imagine, the drug, the uh, targeted therapy to potinib was able to clear the ctDNA in this patient's body. The last group of patients, actually a small fraction of the population, uh, at a few cycles into the study treatment, the ctDNA level not decreasing, but actually increase. Although it is a 10% of the patient population, but those patients, they actually don't do well at all. Uh, this data is quite important for clinical decision-making in the future in that maybe we can use this as a selection approach to identify which patient at early stage that needs intensification of treatment. So that part of the data is new to the field and it can be quite important to patients and clinicians. The last part of this presentation is to talk about a resistance mechanism, because uh, on this clinical trial, uh, there are patients getting clinical benefit from topotinib, but ultimately the tumor develop resistance. Uh, 
Using ctDNA approach, we are also able to understand uh, what type of mutations show up in the tumor that's becoming resistant. Consistent with our prior knowledge that if the tumor has a secondary MET mutation that can bypass the TKI, then the tumor is no longer under suppression of the potinib. Uh, in those type of situations, the patient will need some other type of MET TKI or a completely different treatment strategy. Uh, we also detect KRAS or EGFR alterations in the resistant samples, highlighting a uh, bypass mechanism can serve as resistance both at the front, also at the um, after a uh, duration of response. We also observe about half of the patients, we couldn't detect any resistant mechanism. That area of research is ongoing. I think more effort will go into that unknown space, uh, trying to serve as many patients as possible. So that's the three uh, steps of what we did with CTDNA in the MedExon 14 vision trial report.